Hi folks, Clinton here again. I have uh, some more goodies to share with you this evening. Um, let's see here, I have some more modeling clay set up, but on a little bit larger scale this time, so that way you can get familiar with a little bit more weight. And also, during this uh, session, I would like to go over some of the things you can anticipate um, while doing seals and attaching two different objects together and the importance of finding the center of rotation and the benefits of that and go over some of the basic things you need to know about heat distribution in that process and how to get a strong seal. So let me get started and I'll jump on over to the flashlight here and give you guys some demonstrations with some of these rods I have set up. So, I have some more modeling clay set up around to represent a, a gather, and I have my flashlight set up to represent my flame, and I have some rods over here set up to represent my handles, and what I want to do here is I want to learn to heat up just the tip of this gather here, our tube, our rod, we're going to play imagination here and pretend that it's a, 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 a large rod that we're welding this rod to. So, since this is a larger mass and this is a smaller mass, it's going to take longer for heat to penetrate the larger mass than it does the smaller mass. So, you start by heating the larger mass first. You add a good heat base to it and that generally takes quite a few rotations for the heat to get fully penetrated into that tip. So that's what the importance of rotation is for. So as it gets an even center heat, then you can start warming up your other rod. And as you start warming that rod up, you don't want to get it so hot that it gets floppy because it's a smaller rod and it will heat up quicker. So basically what you want to do is slightly flash it, keeping this in hot, and you want to come together in the flame Dead center, rotate it in the flame, holding it perfectly still, 360 degrees, all the way around. From 12 o'clock all the way around, back to 12 o'clock again. One, at least once or twice in the flame. So that way, that seam gets completely worked. Now, ever so gingerly, lift it out of the flame and continue that rotation and then transfer your heat to the thickest part of the glass. So it's going to hold its heat the longest. So you want to learn to transfer that heat up to the larger glob. Now the larger glob is going to hold its heat longer because it has a larger mass. And then I'm going to keep it straight as I do that. So as that heat transfers up, that basically keeps the heat away from rising into the smaller handle. If you let the heat rise into the smaller handle, what's going to happen is that heat from that larger mass is going to distribute to your smaller handle. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it go out of sync. So by tilting its axis after you hit dead center and you go up, what that's doing is that's letting the heat travel up into the thicker mass rather than from the thicker mass into the thinner mass. So that, that's basically one of the big tips to making seals that I can, that I can give to you. So other than that, what you want to practice is learning how to evenly supply a heat base across a larger gather. And you start by working at the tip first, and you want to rotate just at the tip first there for a while, and you want to make it domed. So always when you're doing an attachment, you want to work on making them domed first. Center that uh, gravity point so it doesn't list side to side, because if it's not centered on the end, as you go down, it will show in your work down below. Now, uh, another thing I wanted to go into during this uh, lesson is, is what happens when you're working with one hand and trying to work down a tube or, or, or uh, a rod or a gather doing spot heating down with a flame. Now, what happens is where it's hot and where it's cold, which is right next to where it's hot, is the cold spot is actually going to be a torquing point. And what I mean by that is when I turn, it's actually gonna slowly start to twist 
as I'm rotating. So one of the importance of being able to spin uh, backwards and forwards is so you can basically wind and unwind that energy. So you're winding and unwinding the spiral in the gather as you go down by controlling the spins. You can feel a, a turning point that it goes to and it starts to want to list to one side as you're rotating with one hand. And then basically what you want to do is at that point, you want to stop and then rotate the other way and unwind that spiral in the opposite direction. It's like massaging that, that, that heat source that's going all the way down, creating a spiral back the other way and it does a reverse spiral around the other way, which basically unwinds the spiral. And so basically, that's a really important thing to know is as you're heating with one handle, it's gonna torque and turn on the cold point that's closest to the handle. The one on the end is kind of free floating. It doesn't have much tension other than just gravitational force of, of what's holding it, uh, of gravity basically, and the rotation is holding it center. So basically a few more things to keep in mind as you're uh, practicing uh, doing seals as you're practicing, you know, doing gathers as you're practicing prepping up your, your ends. So let me show you while we've got some time here um, how to uh, attach two globulars together. So I have two gathers, which is going to represent, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It could be a tubulations that I'm uh, attaching together. It could be, you know, rods that I'm attaching together. But basically, a lot of the, the, the dynamics are the same. But the important thing about connecting two objects together is to making sure that they are near the right size to come together. And I like to make sure that they have a nice dome pronounced on the end. So that way I have a dead center point. And then as I keep my rotations together, I come together with both masses completely hot, meaning I keep this part in the flame and I keep this part in the flame. Sometimes I'm multi-heating and doing a flash heat from both sides back to back, letting one get a little bit in the front of the flame and the other taking some of the wash heat and then going back and forth. So this is a good way to kind of basically heat both sides and then bring them together. And this is where you've got to lock down your rotations and your synchronizations where those those flags are coming together evenly because when you attach the two vessels together, you don't want it to twist because if it twists, it'll be an uneven uh, seal. It will have a, a, a slight warble or a imperfection there in the seal. So slowly heating up to both ends after flash heating, come together, kiss them together, slowly rotate in the flame at least 360 degrees once. Now, once you do that, then you can lift it out of the flame and do your best to keep it centered because it's going to be really hot. Keep it centered, keep it centered, keep it centered, keep it centered. As it cools down, then you can kind of start to squinch on it a little bit if you need it to get a little thicker there or pull on it a little bit if you need it to get a little thinner there. But you have just a small time band uh, that you can really execute that move. But you want to catch it right before it solidifies, right before it hardens. So that's one of the real important things about doing seals and bringing pieces together and uh, the same thing applies with you know tube or our or, or, or rod with tube it's a little more delicate because you want to make sure the wall thickness is the same so you have to prepare your seals well and with rod what's important is making sure you really you can go to from small to big on rod fairly easy you just have to follow the first step i mentioned earlier about basically transferring that heat from those from the the seal back up into the thick spot rather than the thin because it'll, it'll, um, it'll drift off on you because of the heat.